In this example, we have this inverted pendulum. We are going to create a state space model representation for this system. In the inverted pendulum, we have a cart whose mass is m. We apply a force u of t to the cart. The displacement of the cart is y of t. And we have here the pendulum that it has a bob whose mass is m. L is the length of that link, and the angle here is theta. The objective of an inverted pendulum is to apply this force u of t in a controlled manner such that the pendulum is kept in the upright position, that is theta is zero. These equations have been obtained based on this model, and these are the linearized equations of motion for this system. And this is our starting point. Given these equations, how can you represent them in a state space form? Again, the first question here is to define the state space variables. What can store energy in this system? We have both the bob and the uh, cart that can store energy. Both have masses and they can both store energy in the form of kinetic energy. So we can define one of our state variables as the displacement of the cart and we can also use the displacement of the bob and of course their respective derivatives. So let's define our first variable, a state space variable x1 as the position of the cart. x2 is the speed of the cart, that is y dot. x3 is now the angle of the pendulum, that is theta, and x4 is theta dot. If x4 is theta dot, this is the same as x3 dot, and if x2 is y dot, this is the same as x1 dot. Now we can rewrite these equations using the state space variables. Let's start with the first one here. We have m times y double dot, which is x2 dot, plus ml, these are constants, theta double dot, that is x4 dot, minus u of t equals to zero. And you can look at the second equation here, based on, but just by looking at the second equation, we can make some simplifications right away. We can simplify all these masses, and you can simplify the link length L, this L, and this power of two here. And now rewrite this equation using the state variables. What do we get? We get y double dot, that is x2 dot, plus l times theta double dot, which is x4 dot, minus g times theta, which is x3. And this is equal to 0. So here we have Equation 1, here we have equation 2. Very well, now now we have these equations, we have to find the equations for the derivative of the states. We have the equation for the derivative of x1, that is simply x2, and we have the derivative of x3, which is x4. Now we need to find an expression for the derivative of x2 that only depends on the states, not on the derivative of states. And the same for x4. So now the job is very simple, we have to isolate x2 here, replace there, and then isolate x4 here and replacing the other one so we can find the equations for x2 dot and x4 dot. If you look at equation 2, it would be very convenient to isolate for L times x4 because this is the term that it shows there. So from this equation, we can say that L x4 dot is equal to G times x3 minus x2 dot. And now replace L x4 four dot in this equation. So now back to one, so we are actually doing two into one. We have m x two dot plus m times l x four dot, which is this g x three minus x two dot minus u equals to zero. We can now group the terms with x2 dot. We have x2 dot times m, capital M, 
minus low case m plus mgx3 equals to u. And here we're going to make an assumption. Let's assume that the mass of the cart is much greater than that of the box. So m is much greater than lowercase m, which means that m minus m is approximately m. Should have called this variable something else. So if this can be simplified to m, we have an expression for x2 dot. x2 dot becomes u over m plus m g over m x3. So here is the first expression. All right, so to find x2 dot, we isolate it for x4 dot and replace that into the first equation. Now we are solving for x4 dot. So let's do the opposite. We take x2 from the first equation and replace that into the second equation. So from equation 1, we get x2 dot as u divided by m minus ml over m times x4 dot. And now we can replace x2 here, and the only variable that we have is x4 dot. We have x3, but that's fine. It's not the derivative of state, so everything looks good. We can make the same assumption that we did before. The assumption was that the mass of the cart is much greater than the mass of the bob. If this assumption still holds, then this entire term here tends to zero. And you can simplify this expression with x2 dot equals to u over m. We can now take this expression and replace x2 there. And now we do 1 into 2. And we get now this expression replaced there is u m plus l x4 dot minus g x3 equals to 0 which means that x4 dot is g over l times x3 minus u over ml. This is the expression for x4 dot. And here we have now the, full, the last expression that we needed in order to represent this system in a state space. The first equation is x1 dot equals to x2. Second one is x2 dot from here. The third one is x3 dot equals to x4. And the fourth one is x4 dot. So now let's erase this and finally write the system of equations as a function of these state variables. Okay, having the four expressions now makes it easy to write them in the matrix form. We are looking for x1, x2, x3, and x4. Their derivatives, in fact, so this is dot, 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 equals to something times x and plus matrix B times the input to the system, and the input is u of t. So what goes in that matrix? Let's start with x1 dot. x1 dot is taken from here. x1 dot equals to x2. So we have 0, 1, 0, 0. Now let's go to x2 dot. x2 dot is given here x2 dot has only x3, so here we have 0, 0, and 0, and for x3, the coefficient is mg over m. And we also see the input showing up here. So for the element at x1 dot, we have 0 in matrix B, but for x2 dot, we have 1 over m. 
x3 dot now is taken from here, this is x4. So that's simply 0, 0, 0, 1. There is no input here for x3 dot, so this element is 0. And for x4, we take it from here. It's only a function of x4, at x3, sorry, and the input u. So there is no x1, there is no x2, x3 is g over l, x4 is 0, and the output, the input shows up here as negative 1 over m times l. Now this is the first equation, this is matrix A, this is vector B. And now I just realized that when I copy the expression for x2 dot here, this should have been a negative sign, not positive, which makes this element negative. It's all good now. Now we can define the output of the system. What is, what is the output? The output is up to us to define. You can, for example, hypothetically say that the output is theta. What would be, if the output is theta, what would be the second part of the state space? That is, output y equals to cx plus du. It is a simple. It would be c is a vector. And the states here are the same. x1, x2, x3, x4. Plus d times u. u is the input u, the force. Theta is x3. So this would become then 0, 0, 1, 0. And there is no relation between the output and the input directly. So this here is simply 0. If our output was y of t, for example, what would be the difference? Only matrix C would change, and it would change to 1, 0, 0, 0. If the output was the displacement, or let's put it this way, if the output was the speed of the car to y dot, what would change here? This would be 0, 1, y dot is taking x2, 0, 0, and everything else is the same. So this is now the state space representation for this inverted pendulum.